Hi, so welcome to our Google Analytics training. And in this session, we are gonna talk about how to do set up, how to set up goals in Google Analytics. So let's define what are goals. So I define goal as something that actually benefits my business's bottom line. So which is if I'm trying to generate more leads, I'm trying to generate more revenue, is it actually affecting my bottom line? So the goals can be engagement of my page, engagement of my content, you know, lead signups, product purchases, event signups, whatever that could be, or whatever thing I want to track that can be considered as a goal. So I define goals as, as two type of goals. One is hard goals and one is soft goals. So hard goals are something that is actually affecting my business directly and something that generates me revenue. So I could be, you know, leads. So potential leads, people filling out my contact form or lead generation form, uh, purchase of a product or purchase of a paid material, you know, sign up. So a newsletter sign up, sign up for an event, appointments, booking salon appointments. You know, if you are you are a fashion lawyer, so somebody booking in a consultation with you, or downloads for your eBooks, white papers, checklists. Because anytime somebody downloads, you're collecting their email addresses and your name, and that can be potentially nurtured into a lead. Soft goals are just as important as hard goals, but soft goals are the ones that are indirectly affecting your hard goals. So for example, content engagement. So these days, no matter what type of company you're running or what type of website you have, you have to have content because people don't will not convert directly. Unless if new user lands on your site, the likelihood of them converting on the first interaction with your company is very, very low. So typically people want to get a feel for who you are as a company and what your brand stands for. And that thing is usually consumed by giving them a different type of content. So it could be video content, a blog post content, like for my rogue line, I'm actually creating this YouTube channel. So content engagement doesn't directly generate revenue for me, but it's indirectly leading me to lead. So maybe people will come to my site or my YouTube channel three times, four times, five times, and maybe on the sixth time they end up filling out a form that generate leads for me, or maybe on the sixth time they end up buying a product that I'm offering. So this is indirectly affecting support pages. This is actually pretty great too. So let's say if I have a, I have an app or maybe I have a site where people need to sign up and during the sign up process, you know, people are going to the sign up and then they're coming back to my support page to read the FAQs or read the, you know, how to sections. So this indicates to me that maybe my, the UI or UX of my sign up process is not that, um, let's say, easy to understand that people have to keep coming back to the FAQs to get the questions answered or maybe my checkout process is not in line that when somebody's going to the checkout process it doesn't show them what is my refund policy or how much will it be charged for shipping and maybe the people are coming back to my FAQs to discover what my, my refund policy is so this could be indirect way for me to checking what questions people are looking for when they're trying to complete a certain action and then I can modify the particular action based on engagement. So let's deep dive into how we are going to conduct um, our, our goal settings. So once you sign into Google Analytics, uh, you come to your home page and you will click on, on admin. Uh, one thing you should keep in mind is you have to have an admin access in order to set up goals. So if you don't have admin access, you will not be able to set up goals. So make sure you have that. So you click on admin, you select what your property is. So this is my uh, test account for my old Rogueline uh, website. So we're just going to use that. And under view, you will click on goals. So what Google does is it gives you some basic templates. So we're going to start with new goal. And this is a step one. So Google gives you some basic templates that you can actually use. So for example, they divide goals into revenue, focus goals, acquisition, inquiry or engagement. So under revenue, if you want to check somebody placing an order or making an appointment, you know, acquisition, people creating an account, uh, inquiry could be view more people doing the contact us, you know, some friend referring you or engagement, somebody doing a media play newsletter, sign up. So let's say for a revenue, if somebody wants to make an appointment, so this could be making an appointment for, you know, your, your salon, you will select this and then you click continue. And you can name this goal to whatever you want. So make an appointment, you know, let's just leave it as that. And this is a goal slot ID. So this is more um, just something for you to keep track. So they allows you to track up to, you know, 20 different goals and you can set it the way, whichever one you pick, it doesn't really change anything. It's just easier for you to um, categorize in the future. 
So now the type of goal. So type of goal could be destination, duration, pages per screens or events. So destination is when somebody takes this action and how do you consider that this goal is complete is when somebody lands on this particular destination. So for example, if you have, so in this case, when we're doing making an appointment, so you will have a form that people fill out when they're making an appointment. And when they click on, you know, you know, set up or book an appointment, you land them on a thank you page. And that could be your destination URL that when somebody lands on a thank you page, after filling out the form, you consider that as a completion of a goal. You know, duration, it doesn't um, work in this appointment, but duration would be something that if you are checking content engagement, that you want people to come to your site or your particular blog post, and they're spending four minutes, five minutes consuming that content. So you can even check that. Uh, pages per screens, this is good when you're trying to do for engagement as well. Then when somebody comes to your site, are they going from one blog post to another? Are they spending time on your site? You know, and this is a good in indication that if people are visiting at least three to four pages per session, then it means that they are actually engaging with the content. And session is defined as when somebody logs into your site or visits, visits your page and keep doing activity without a 30. So if there's a gap, if somebody goes to your site and you know, takes an action and then goes to some other page or different tab and does not come back to your site within 30 minutes, then the session is expired. So as long as session is basically continuous activity on your site without a 30 minute interval. So if somebody is taking an action, they go open up a different tab and then they come back to your site after 30 minutes, then it will be considered a new session. Uh, event, this could be, you know, somebody played a video and you can define whichever way you want that event to be. So event is pretty, pretty open, uh, whichever way you define. So this could be somebody clicked on a particular button, somebody played a video, whatever that you want to be. So since we're looking for making an appointment and the way we want to track this is after somebody has filled out the contact form, they will land on a thank you page that is specific to this, this make an appointment page. So I'm going to pick uh, destination and I click continue. So this is where destination gives me three options. It could be equals to, begins with, regular repression. So we're going to focus on equals to. So equals to means, so this is my, let's say my website URL is, you know, roguelinecom slash appointment. So somebody landed on that page, they make an appointment, and after they have done making an appointment, they land on a thank you page. So which could be, you know, roguelinecom slash appointment slash appointment thank you page. So I don't have to write the whole URL but I can type in the, the um, um, destination for the, that thank you page. So let's say, let's say if I'm naming this as thank you appointment yeah, booking. So make sure this is actual URL of your thank you page. The reason I like to name them like this is because if I have multiple thank you pages, so this thank you page is specifically when somebody books an appointment. I could have another thank you page when somebody goes to my contact us page or when somebody you know, uh, buys a product. So each thank you page URL could be different. So this is the one that is specifically, so the only way user will ever land on this thank you page is when they have filled and form to book an appointment and there's no other way they can land on this. Then I know within, with that this goal will be considered complete when somebody lands on this particular page. Uh, this is where you can add a value. This is totally optional. So for me, let's say if I'm targeting that making an appointment and my value of my lead is, let's say 50 bucks, so I can enter over here, I can keep track. And this allows you to add a funnel. So this will be, you know, your, your funnel would be like which page people came to and from there, which page that they went to to complete this action. So for us, we could be, you know, appointment, uh, appointment page. So this could be, you know, roguelinecom slash appointment. Like let's call it appointment. And you can even, so I can say it like this, the user has to visit this page. And if this is required, I will turn this on. And if it's not required, I can always turn it off. So I, let's say for this one, I want this to be required when somebody came to this page and then they have gone here, then this is the required. And you can keep adding more steps if you want. So if your funnel is, you know, maybe it's a three step funnel or four step funnel, you can keep adding and then you can subtract here. And that's it. So now you can click on save and now your goal is set. So as you can see, it says make an appointment goal and the goal recording is on. I think it usually takes about 24 hours or somebody who go out there and take action. 
and, and you can do that. So you can set as many goals as you want. So let's say if this is making appointment goal, you want to set up another one when somebody signs up for your newsletter. So that could be something like this. So you will click on here and then you will go through the whole process. Or if you want to see, if, let's, let's say somebody created an account. So you can click on here and then you go to the next one and you want to see what the destination URL is when somebody has created an account. So you will enter the destination URL the same way right here, the way you did it before. You know, another good one is to track is, let's click here. You know, so newsletter sign up is another good one. Sharing a social contact is another good one. Uh, view more, so view product or different services. So you can pick whichever one works for you and whatever your need is, needs is, you can track. So their custom goals, we'll cover this into a, in a different um, video, but custom goals can be customized to exactly what your needs are. So these are just basic templates. So I think when you have, you're running your basic e-commerce business, you have your, uh, you know, your, your blog or basic site, these templates pretty much take care of whatever your goals could be. So this is for when you want to go for advanced uh, custom goal tracking in Google Analytics, this would be beneficial. But for your purpose, this pretty much uh, one of these options would pretty much do the trick. Right. So this is basically a simple way how you set up goals in Google Analytics. So hi, this is Vishal Kalia from Fashion Marketing. And if you have any questions and any part of this goal settings you did not understand, please leave them in the form of a comment and I'll be more than happy to answer. And thank you very much for your time. And if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and do subscribe to our channel. And thank you very much for your time and have an awesome day.